Hey guys, I'm GML Waffle, and welcome to a series called Game Maker Fundamentals, where I'll be teaching you the fundamentals that you need to know in order to program in GML or Game Maker language. So, in this first part, what I'm going to be covering is the for loop. Now, a for loop is something pretty cool and very useful in programming. It basically takes a set of values and constantly runs through a certain set of code until a value is met. So, as you'll see, I have some things set up. I have a sprite called SPR underscore C. And if we go in, it's just a sprite that has six images, all different colors. And I have an object called OBJ underscore for loop. Nothing going on inside of it yet. And then I have a room called fundamentals where I have my for loop object placed near the center. So, Getting started with for loops, what we're going to do is we're going to add an event and we're going to add the draw event. Now you can use a for loop in almost any event, but for this tutorial I'm going to be using the draw event because we're going to be drawing some sprites to the screen. So to set up your for loop, you're going to simply say for and then open parentheses. You also have to open curly braces because that is where the code you want to run will be placed. So a for loop takes three conditions. The first one sets the for loop, so we're going to set a variable called i, and we're going to set it equal to zero. Next, we are going to say i is less than or equal to five. And finally, we're going to say i plus equals one. So what this is doing is it's setting the variable i equal to zero. Then the second part is checking to see if i is less than or equal to five. If it's not, then it's going to add one, making it one, two, three, four, then five. And it's also gonna run whatever code we place inside of here. But as soon as i equals five, it's going to stop running the code in here and completely ignore all of this altogether. So for this example, we're going to be drawing a sprite to the screen. So we're gonna say draw sprite, and the sprite that we're gonna be drawing is spr underscore c. The sub image is going to be sub image i, because since we have this sprite set up, and it takes number values zero through five, we can simply say that our sub image is going to equal the variable i, which is constantly counting up 0 through 5. So our sub image is i. The x position is going to be the x position of our object. And the y position is going to be y plus, open parentheses, i times 32. So what this is going to do is it's going to take i which is constantly adding one every loop through and multiply it by 32. So we're gonna be moving 32 blocks down every time i increments by one. And what it's gonna do is since i is set as our sub image, it's going to choose a new sub image every time it loops through. So this is all you have to do to set up a for loop. If we go ahead and run the game how it is, you'll see that it has each of our sub images being drawn in a row. So here i equals zero, so it's setting the x position to the x that we place the object, and it's setting the y to zero times 32, which equates to zero. Then i is one for the second loop, so our y is moving down 32 pixels. One times 32 is 32, so y plus 32 then y plus 64, and so on and so forth. So a for loop can be used for several things. You can also use it to display text or find the value of an array that you've created. So if we wanted to draw the text of which box is being drawn, we could simply say for and then set it up the exact same way we did before. And so we want to basically take these same values and display them over this sprite. So we're gonna say j equals zero, and something important to remember is you can't use the same variable you used 
in a different for loop. So we're gonna say i and then j. So j is set to zero. And if j is less than or equal to five, we're gonna keep looping and then j is going to plus equal one. So what do we wanna happen here? We basically want the exact same thing to happen as what happened up here, but instead of drawing a sprite, we're going to draw text. So the text that we're gonna to draw to the screen is draw text. The X position is going to be X. The Y position is going to act the exact same way as up here. So Y plus open parenthesis J times 32. And the string that we want to draw is j so in order to draw the variable we have to say string j and what string will do is it will convert our variable into a string so instead of a variable that says a digit value it will turn it into a variable that has a string value like so all right so now if we run it it draws 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 at the exact X and Y positions of our boxes. So, something important to remember when using draw functions is the order of how you draw your instances. So, if I was to draw the text before I drew the sprites, the sprites would be drawn over the top of the text. That's because we're first drawing the text and then we're overlaying it with the sprites that are being drawn afterwards. So order is very important when working with drawing. So something else you could actually do to make this look a little bit nicer is when we draw our text, we could say draw set color to see white. What that'll do is it will set the drawing color of our text to white and make our font white. But an important thing to note is you also want to draw set color back to zero, which is the default value. So the nice part about doing this in a for loop is that every time it runs through, it's gonna set the color to white, draw our text, and then reset it. If we just said draw set color C white anywhere else, everything else that's being drawn will be drawn using C white. So now if we run this, our text is white. So this has been the fundamental of for loops. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you thought down below, and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. As always, I'll see you guys next time.